It was New York City, 1899, and newspaper was king. And the two kings of the newspaper world were William Randolph Hearst and Joseph Pulitzer, were two of the richest and most powerful men in America at the near turn of the century. Each owned a giant newspaper in New York City, and both competed to grab readers with sensational headlines and extra editions. Read all about it. They depended on a large network of city children and teenagers to get the papers to the readers. When the two millionaires tried to gouge the newsies for a penny's more, it was nearly their downfall. I'm Jake Storielli. This is the story of the newsies in New York City. And more so, this is Laughs from the Past. All right, what's up? How you doing, Jake? It's a new season. Do you feel uh, new? I feel a new. New season of Last from the Past, season four, all about children making history. Children making history. It's going to be a swift reminder that you, when you were a kid, you didn't do shit. Ooh, did you that's make what this is? That's what this is. It's the whole season. <laughs> that's did what you, the plan did, was? Damn. Did, did you make any history as a child, Jake? History I made as a child. Um, I mean, after I was class president of the high school, they made a rule that you had to be a lot better academically than I was. Um, <laughs> so that's that's kind of history. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that real? Yeah. Yeah, it's also uh, our our buddy our buddy uh, Kyle Flisher. His little brother was class president a few years after me, and it was similar circumstances. So then they made the rules like you had to have like a three eight GPA, and you had to be in like five groups or something. So it's like wow, um, can't just <laughs> shots vote fired. It, can't just vote in the, the the fun kid anymore. The town idiot. <laughs> um, so I I guess that's history. Um, I mean, two-sport middle school captain. You still hear a lot of people talk about that. Um, but yeah, other, otherwise not too, too much history made. What, what was some history you made as a youth? Zero. What? I was the first uh, American that um, wore board shorts during diving class in Australia. See? There's was, probably there. There's a group of Aussies saying, "Remember, remember that freaking weirdo that wore board shorts to dive class?" I uh, because they all wore speedos, and I I was just too. My mom was like, "Aren't you more embarrassed that you're the only one wearing board shorts?" I was like, "No." So I was a pretty no. good diver, Jake. Like I had a I'm back dive. Naked. I'm not naked in the pool right yeah. now, so I'm not more embarrassed. For like ten year old dive class, I graduated. Yeah. To like they were like you can go to the next level. I had a back dive on point. I had a back flip dive, pretty cool. And uh, they're like you can go to the next level, but you have to wear speedos. And I just quit. My mom was like, Jim, you're like excelling at this. You're doing well. Yeah. I said, No, I'm gone. No, thank you. Play by my rules, mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll find something else to be good at. I'll just yeah. play wall ball during a uh, recess. Hey, ball shorts. You want to play wall ball? <laughs> All right. Have you ever seen the movie Newsies? Uh no. I know I know it's an O'Brien like family one it's, it's a movie on the wall in the O'Brien house. It is it had to be our most worn down VHS. Right. It's uh, you know, Christian Bale, Newsies, it's this story. It's exactly this story that we're telling. Like uh right. it's spot on, but it's a musical. Christian Bale signed up and then afterwards they told him, Oh, it's gonna be a musical now and he was like, What? <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. I'm just not singing. Yeah. No, he's got some good songs in it. Yeah. Now it's a Broadway play. The Newsies. Everyone everyone knows like what a newsboy is, but they don't right. really know that like it was a real thing. And they were they weren't 15 years old. They weren't high schoolers. They were children in the movie. The Newsies. They're all like, you know, 16, 17, 18. Right. That's actors. That's old. They these were children. What was your first job? Ooh, my first job was an umpire uh, in eighth grade. Okay. I was 14 years old. I umpired. 
Yeah, that's okay. definitely my first job. Like, besides watering my neighbor's pant- plants while they were out of town. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's what I'm I'm trying to decide between. We had we had a nice we had a set of old like grandparent neighbors and they used to have they they'd had like two grandsons come over and they were just two like 5-year-old boys that were just like <laughs> almost too much energy for them. So when they were watching the grandkids, they'd have me come over and just basically play free safety. <laughs> um so I mean, I wasn't really babysitting. I was just kind of there. Um so I don't know if you count that. I, I, I kind of forgot about my umpiring. That almost like wasn't a job. That was like, <laughs> here's here's 30 bucks and a hot dog. <laughs> yeah, my first job that I got like a paycheck for with taxes coming out of it was a uh, bagger at a grocery store. Yeah, mine was maintenance at a golf course. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. I, Newsies. Do you want me to break out into the Newsies songs whenever? Like, if you, if you t- feel it, man, I'll never you, stop you. If you, you know tell that. me uh, Pulitzer and Hearse, I just think of... Pulitzer and Hearst, they think they got us. Do they got us? No. All right. Yeah. I know. I know like the whole movie Newsies by heart. Anyway, here we go. Newsies hollered the day's headlines from busy street corners and subway entrances, from positions outside the revolving doors of office buildings, and from sidewalks near the lunch counters where secretaries and business people grabbed quick meals. Some Newsies stayed on the streets all day long, avoiding school while others raced to their positions as soon as school was finished. They made their profits by buying papers from the newspaper company and then selling them to readers for a little more, pocketing the difference. They kept about a nickel for every 10 papers they sold. If they didn't sell a paper, they had to take the loss. It was a tough deal, but a straight deal. At least a newsie knew what to expect. So we can talk about how they got replaced by just like a stand yeah that's tough huh but you got replaced by an in inanimate object a lot of people get replaced by machines these days and computers right. you know like first machines replace people then computers and technology replace people the newsies got replaced by basically a box on the side Pieces of, the road. of wood <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's a tough break it's a tough break can you imagine though break. this is good business for these kids like they're learning you know you got to buy it wholesale wholesale you got to if i sell them for this much more blah blah you get the difference like business 101 at 10 years old yeah it's like a hot hot dog vendor at a stadium a beer vendor now would you would you lie about the headlines in the movie newsies they embellish the headlines uh, to try and sell the papers their whole slogan is new headlines don't sell papes newsies sell papes right so there's one I- story where it's like baby born with tree heads and then it's like a lie right i i feel like i would i would put my heart and soul into like pushing the envelope as far as i could mm-hmm. um without lying and i i wouldn't want it to come off deceitful i'd want someone to buy it look at it and be like newsy kid kind of got me today yeah but I appreciate it. I appreciate the hustle. That's where I would want to land. We hate clickbait so much. Right. The streets of New York City were just a bunch of 10-year-olds screaming clickbait at your face. Is it the original clickbait? Guess so, yeah. Maybe like, I'm trying to think if Renaissance fairs tried to like bait people in or anything like that, but I don't think so. I mean, there had to be like false advertisements for a while. Like probably right. gladiators, they were like, "This guy's a giant. He's got four heads," and then it's like a guy that has one head. And he's right, like he's the strongest man you've ever seen. He's the size of a mountain. Yeah, he's not. Yeah. Okay. So not the original clickbait, but like maybe the original like mass clickbait for articles and news. Yeah. All right. The trouble started when Hearst and Pulitzer decided to make up for slow sales by raising the price that newsies had to pay for their papers. In the movie, they say, charging the Newsies more for their papes, disgraceful, Denty. So, I mean, it seems like fair business. Well, let's just... Actually, it doesn't. It's kind of fucked. Charge the 10-year-olds more? Know what I think you would have been really good at in the right town? What's that? Being the paper boy. You think? Oh, yeah. I'm picturing you 
cruising on a bike, tossing papers oh, at like oh. 4 a.m. Oh, yeah. I've always like I always thought that job was cool. Yeah, I think I, like you would have been like we're talking about kids leaving impressions and how people still, you know, talk about that time I ran the mile during gym class. I peed in the woods and the whole seventh grade staff saw me and like that's a kid making history in your town. Like if you were in the right town in the right time period, you would be like a legendary paper boy. I truly believe that. I thank you. I appreciate that. I've always was drawn to that job. There's a movie called The Paper Brigade that came out in like '92, and it was okay. about a paper boy who like had all these problems on his route, like a grumpy man, a dog, sure. and he like solves them, you know. And like right. he like figured. I was like, this is the coolest thing in the world. Yes. And then there's another. There's another movie called The Spectacular Now, where Miles Teller's in it, and he's sitting in the back of a truck helping out with a paper route, just sitting in the back of a truck reclined and just tossing papers onto every driveway. And I'm like, that's the most fun you can have. Yeah, I mean, that's a dream. I, I picture you, I mean, you would get to the level where, you know, a lot of the newsies, they, you know, they'd start, they'd get, or not newsies, these are the newspaper bike people, but mm -hmm. you'd start the day, like everyone gets their newspaper, it's like super early, people are like pissy. Like you'd, you'd come in and then everyone would circle back at the end of the day and you'd be like, oh, today was a great day at 200 out of 233 right on the porch. And people would oh. be like, oh yeah. Yeah. And so uh, most of the people would be like, dude, are you kidding me? Like, why are you even keeping track of that? Like, who cares? And you're like, oh, great day. If I delivered newspapers, I'd 100% have an average of driveways hit, yes. porches hit. Yeah. You, you're making yeah, me upset you, that I never analytics. did this. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's still time if you really want. <laughs> no, I saw an adult delivery person once. Oh, yeah, that's that's got to be a tough. And it was like heartbreaking. I was like, oh, that's not fun. Their car was filled with newspapers. They're just smoking cigarettes, drinking coffee, and just like slowly driving through neighborhoods, dropping them on the edge of the driveway. I was like, holy shit, dream ruined. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is brutal. The, the, the technology didn't help there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Hearst and Pulitzer figured that the boys couldn't do anything about it. Just charge those 10-year-olds more. But they were very wrong, Jake. In July of 1899, 300 newsies gathered in City Hall Park and formed their own union. We're talking about 10-year-olds. Yeah. They elected officers and made up committees. They announced that they would refuse to deliver Hearst's New York Journal or Pulitzer's New York World until their buying price went back to normal. We're here for our rights and we will die defending them, explained 10-year-old Boots McClellan. McElinan? Boots. Great Boots. name. There's a character named Boots in Newsies, the okay. movie. How nuts is that? Like... How fucking nuts is that? Um, interesting. I um, I don't know. I don't know if it's the devil's advocate in me, or I don't know what it is. I I guess I'm just trying to put myself in the time period and picture a group of kids and like. I don't know. Like I almost picture kids being more willing to do this because like. Think about like when unions were forming and the steel mills and all that. Like, a they they got there, but like, I don't know if you were the guy that tried to start it, and like the the higher ups found out, like they fired you and now you didn't have a job and you couldn't feed your family. Mm -hmm. Like kids, it kind of hits the point where like I don't know, you're a group of kids, like most of you are friends and stuff or whatever, and then. I don't know. You're like, hey, they're charging us more. Like, hey, I heard my dad's in a union. Should we start a union? Like, I picture kids being like, yeah, let's yeah, start a damn union. Still you know? 10, I, yeah. I mean, it's 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 impressive, but I'm not like blown away. Like, wow, these these kids were over the top. Like, I'm picturing ten year old myself being a newsie, and if someone's like, they're charging us more, so we're gonna start a union tonight, and I'd be like, yeah, I'll do whatever you guys say to me. Yes, but there still has to be the the the, the ringleaders. The ringleaders are impressive. Yeah. Everyone else following suit. Yeah. Sure, of course. Um, the strike lasted two weeks. The newsies demonstrated at the places where delivery carts usually gave them their bundles of papers. They put signs up on nearby lampposts that read 
help the newsboys, and our cause is just. Their tactics were not gentle. Sometimes hundreds of boys surrounded the carts and threatened the drivers, who quickly tossed the papers over the side and fled. (laughs) Nice. Uh, Mobs of boys threw rocks at the men Hearst and Pulitzer hired to replace them, the scabs. Soon, nobody would even pick up the papers for fear of being confronted by angry boys. Now, this scene is hilarious. Okay. Just scared to read the New York Journal because if you do, you'll have five 10-year-olds terrorizing you. A delivery driver? Like, I mean, five kids are scary, so I'm not knocking this delivery kids driver. Kids are scary. But you drive up with a, to deliver your you know thousands of papers... And the kids just tear apart your truck and rip all the things. And you got to run home in a panic and you get home to your wife. I was work today. It's like, I got terrorized by 110 year olds. It was horrible. And I have a lot of sympathy because that's miserable. <laughs> it's really funny though. Yeah. Like, I, like imagine if you walked into an alley and you saw like a group of like four sketchy people and it's just like you and the four and they're like adults. Like you'd be like, Oh shit. Like I, I have to be careful, otherwise this could be real bad. All right, now, all right, let's say two two children, two 10-year-olds make up a, a grown adult. I mean, we're talking now like an alley with 50 real people or 100 kids. That's horrifying. And you can't really fight back. If they wanted to, they could eat you alive. Yeah, you can't fight back. No. It's terrible. It's terrifying. So, yeah, their strike was working. Police were caught in the middle. Because the public supported the newsies, but the companies and replacement workers demanded protection. And boys could almost always outrun the police. That's pretty funny. Like, yeah, I'm not outrunning a 10-year-old. That's pretty hilarious. (laughs) Like, how how far have we come? Like, now nowadays the police officers take so much pride in, like, yeah, like, you you can't outrun a police officer. Like, you, you know, you... We, we've seen so much crap. Like, if we get our hands on you, we're going to beat the hell out of you. Like, back then, they were like, <laughs> those are fucking kids. I'm not chasing them down. Are you kidding me? <laughs> fast, fastest kid alive. <laughs> yeah. Like, exactly. Like, that's that's the funny scene from Superbad. Back then, it was like, oh, no, he was 10, man. No way I was catching yeah. him. <laughs> like, they're skirting through alleys, going over fences and stuff. You're just like, fuck <laughs> yeah, that. No, thank you. <laughs> The newsboy strike spread throughout New Jersey, Connecticut, and Massachusetts. That's what, like, how are these 10-year-olds able to spread word of mouth so quickly? I mean, I don't know, but I think if, if we were there, we would know. Yeah, well, I do know note, that. Know note, note what I'm picturing? Know, know how, like... I think I have an answer coming up. It's usually cousins, or you have a friend that moved away or something, but there's always... a a couple kids at the high school that know a couple kids at the other high school and yeah. like yeah 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 like i'm i'm trying to picture i don't know like i i, I clearly and I'll, I'll leave names out of it but i remember like a cute girl in high school who her cousin went to like one of the you know one of the high schools 30 minutes away and it was like yo can we hang out with them at some point so like i'm i'm picturing something like that being the gossip train yeah that makes sense. I mean, yeah. we're, in the movie, they like they in the movie they know the five boroughs that need to have the biggest like group. It was like um, the Bronx, the Five Points, the Battery, and all that stuff. And they went and got the leader from everywhere. Um, Pulitzer, as newspaper sales dropped, Pulitzer and Hearst began to lose big money. Advertisers demanded lower rates because of the strike. Like, no one's buying your paper, so not going to pay full price. Yeah, no. But the other newspapers in New York cheerfully made heroes of the newsies. Pulitzer's assistant sent him a worried message. The people seem to be against us. They are encouraging the boys and tipping them and refraining, refraining from buying the papers for fear of having them snatched from their hands. I'd love to go see New York City at this two-week period in 1899 when you have just little boys just running around snatching newspapers out of hands. And scary. The, it's scary. It's uncivilized. Scary. 
but that's probably how they spread spread a little bit because the other newspapers were like, oh, yeah, take down Pulitzer and Hearst. Yeah, fuck yeah. Hell yeah. One summer night, the Newsies organized a mass rally in lower Manhattan and 5,000 boys showed up. Jesus. A grand cheer arose when a leader named Kid Blink vaulted mm. up onto the speaker's platform. I was saving that name from you because it's such a cool name. Kid Blank, dude. That's an Blink. incredible nickname. Blink. Blink? Blink. Oh, damn. I loved Kid Blank. He wore an eye patch. Okay. So, I mean, I obviously still like that. But, dude, Kid Blank is like a powerful, I want to be identified, but I want to be identified for the people. I like Kid like, Blink I, because uh, it's like the eye and the eye, and he wore an eye patch. Yeah. But yeah. Kid Blank sounds like the most powerful person I've ever heard of. <laughs> it sounds like anonymous. Like it sounds like uh, it's like I am an anonymous anonymous leader that cannot be stopped. <laughs> so Kid Blank got onto the platform. He raised his hands for silence and scratched his head as if something were puzzling him. I'm trying to figure it out. How ten cents on a hundred papers can mean more to a millionaire than it does to the newsboys. I just can't see it. The Newsies vowed to continue the strike until they brought Pulitzer and Hearst to their knees. Whoa. 5,000 kids, Jake. Yeah, I mean, again, that's like a horrific number. They rented out a hall. Or like a hall. I'm I'm picturing five kids in my apartment right now, and it's scary. How do you get 5,000 kids to sit down? You don't. (laughs) That's a nightmare of an assembly. You don't. <laughs> Just straight don't. Well, when sales dropped by two-thirds, Hearst and Pulitzer gave up. They offered a deal that kept the prices the same, but let the Newsies return unsold papers and get their money back. In the end, it meant more money than before. The Newsies took it, disbanded their union, and went back to selling papers. So, that's... uh. So in the end, I, I don't know if I kind of read that quickly, but they were like, all right, we're not lowering the prices, but if you buy 100 papers and you only sell 80, then we'll buy the rest back from you at the same price that you bought them from us. Right. Kind of a fair is fair type deal. Mm-hmm. But they won, man. They like A bunch of kids brought the two most powerful men in New York City to their terms. Yeah, they uh, what? How how do we label this? Is it is it abuse of power or just underestimating kids or a little of both? It's both. It's underestimating. It's abuse right. of power. Yeah, it's it's not a good look. Were girls newsies? Yeah, there were some. There's there's a picture of some in the book here, but there's not a there wasn't a lot. I'm trying to find uh, if you Google image Kid Blank. Like he's a character in Newsies the movie, but not um, like Jake. If I send you this picture right here, okay, you're you're going to be scared. Like if you had these ten year old Peaky Blinder looking Newsies smoking cigars and stealing papers out of your hands, you're terrified. Yo, I know this is. Like, such a phrase you shouldn't say. But these kids smoking cigarettes and cigars is one of the most badass pictures I've ever seen. Knowing what they did, too, the whole backstory. Like, fuck that. (laughs) (laughs) I I thought you were going to say, fuck those kids. No. Like, dude, like this, like... Kid Blink is the toughest character I've ever met. I know, man. Dude. It's... And... (sighs) Jim, I mean, this is kind of the origins of laughs from the past. But Kid Blink should be shared with the youth across America. You could Photoshop some of the cigarettes out. (laughs) I'm fine with that. Did you click, click around the other pictures of them just, like, smugging the cameras? Yeah, man, this whole this whole thing is incredible. 
Like the real pictures are kids kids should know about kid blink kid blink. I'm telling you, man, I got a whole book here. This whole season, season four, is gonna be all about kids who made history. Like, let me read some titles to you and see what you're interested in. Sure. Um we got John Thayer was the uh, last person to be on the Titanic. Uh, he was the last person to be touching the Titanic before it went into water. He survived. Um, okay. We got spies in the Revolutionary War. We got, they actually don't have, uh, there's Sacagawea in here, but we kind of did that already. They don't have um, good, like, titles. Like, we, I wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to know what it's about just from the title. So this was a bad thing to start doing but whatever <laughs> <laughs> whatever remember that little kid in, in season two that was all about the civil war there was like johnny shiloh the little kid who joined the war at 10 right like he could be this but yeah um if anyone knows of any stories let us know but go watch newsies it's a great movie now that you know the story my my sister watched it with us as adults and i was telling her like she's like oh i guess i just watched this as like good guys bad guys surface level she didn't know that that was happening like they were right what um i i've got an interesting one for you because this kind of is the kickoff chapter and i i think the the newsies is fun and a right way to start where what children in history do we know that have like done big things like nowadays is it just like child stars and stuff yeah i i mean i don't know like prodigies yeah, I'm trying to think like what's a good what's a good prodigy. I think like Mozart was a prodigy. I think he was well, like he, but I don't know if he was famous as a child. Tiger Woods. Yeah, he was a teenager. There's a lot of sports figures. Well, Tiger was on TV at like age two. Yeah, I, I guess yeah. My my knowledge is kind of only sports, so I go. But there, I mean, but there's probably a ton of two year olds that have a good golf swing that are on TV at two, but don't pan out. Right. The fact that he panned out is great. Yeah, um, I, I'm blanking. There's got like um, uh, Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid. Um, Monet Davis. I I only have sports. <laughs> you only know sports. <laughs> Strictly sports. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was trying to find a list, but it, it, Mark it Zuckerberg. Kind of, but he was like, a young adult. Yeah, like OG Zuck. Yeah, I don't know. There's a whole book of them here, and we're gonna do probably ten episodes worth. But go, uh, go look at the pictures of Kid Blank and and Co. Do you think? How do you do? You think uh, there was a way for them to just like? How big do you think this story could have gotten? Like they, the Hertz and Pulitzer caved after two weeks. That's interesting. So, this is all. This is almost painting Hertz and Pulitzer in a good in a good light for them stopping it at two weeks. Because if the kids can get five thousand assembled in two weeks, what could they do if the city started brewing and this this went into like six months? The streets would have like lost control. The kids would have ruled the streets. Yeah. Yeah, man. So shout out I, but, to Hurston Pulitzer for for basically admitting they made an error. I want to know if, if there's an adult backing this. In the movie The Newsies, there's a the 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 a writer for the newspaper The Sun. They covered the strike, right? But he wasn't really in. Well, this is a fictional Disney movie, so right. But, but he was just like <laughs> watching them, and 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 not really giving them advice. Like he helped, he bailed them out of jail once, right. So that there had to be figures like that, but I wonder if there was a, um, just one, like a dad, Kid Blink's dad, right? who was like in the wings of the assembly, you know? Do this, do this. I, Kid, I like to Kid think, Blink's no. dad did not have power over him. <laughs> I've seen Kid Blink. <laughs> Kid Blink is his own dad. Um, no, I, I, think, I think that turns into an interesting, like almost cultural conversation where... I, like the parents weren't as invest not invested but it was like be be home for supper and you'll get fed and like don't die 
Yeah. Like it was it was the old rules of parenting. Like I I'm I'm sure most of the parents didn't give a damn. <laughs> like in in a nice way. <laughs> wow, listen to this. In July of 26, 1899, rumors spread among the newsboys that strike leaders Kid Blank and David Simmons had betrayed the strike and agreed to sell the boycotted papers in exchange for a bribe from the newspaper executives. Both boys denied the charges, but some sources note that Kid Blank wore clothes a bit nicer than usual. In response to these suspicions, Kid Blank and David Simmons resigned from their leadership positions. Simmons changing from union president to treasurer and Kid Blank becoming a walking delegate. Man, it it almost turns into, and you know, you know I'm not a huge politics guy, but... Like I, I think you and I both agree. Like we, we've hit the point in modern politics where it's like this system doesn't work for nowadays. <laughs> like if you, if you need to change something, like it's impossible. Like there's all these gridlock jokes, blah blah blah. But like this shows the advantages of having loose rules and being kids. Like Kid Blink got called corrupt, and so did the other kid, and they were like, "Hey, look, here's the deal. We're not corrupt, but if this is gonna cause a problem, like we can take lesser positions." Yeah. And like that's not how the real world works. <laughs> so, I do have to correct this right now. Kid Blink was 18 okay. during the strike. Yeah, I mean Kid Blink was a dad. So, listen to Kid Blink's other nicknames, Jake. His real name was Louis Belletti. Louis Belletti. He was 18, had red hair and had an eye patch over one eye. He also Jeez. went by the nicknames Red Blink. That's nowhere near as cool as Kid Blink. Yeah, it's Kid Blank. Muggsy McGee. Why I mean, the fuck was his nickname Muggsy McGee? That's pretty... Oh, I think he was mugging people a lot. Um, <laughs> and listen to this last one. Blind Diamond. A guy with an eye patch named Blind Diamond? Yeah, maybe don't teach the kids about Kid Blank because they'll be too strong. Yeah. Simmons was found boring. Uh, Then there was Racetrack, Higgins. That's a character from the movie as well. He was the leader of the Brooklyn Union and was elected vice president of the General Union after Kid Blank and David Simmons stepped back. He was a fixture at Sheepshead Bay Racetrack and referenced horses in many quotes at the time of the strike. (laughs) Just talked about horses. I've got it. This, This is getting off the beaten path a little bit. Do you think you would have been more into horses back in the day? There's only three sports at this time. Boxing, horse boxing, racing, baseball. Right. So, so that's a yes. So yeah. So okay. I like sports. This guy's name, Henry Butler. He went by Major Butts. Obvious. That's a no, and that's obvious. <laughs> Major Butts and Kid Blink. Like, that's who's terrorizing the world. Jesus. The Newsboy strike of 1899 has been credited with inspiring later strikes, including one in Butte, Montana, and Louisville, Kentucky. Jeez, man. This is the Wikipedia now, which has much more info. The rally at Irving Hall. It was sponsored by Senator Timothy D. Sullivan. So that's some help they got there. 5,000 boys from Manhattan. Crazy. Other speeches were made by War Horse Brennan, Bob the Indian, Crazy, Racetrack, <laughs> Boots. The squad. The squad. Oh, man. Okay. That's a cool story. All right. I think that ends this one. Cool story. I love that story because I like the movie because I grew up watching it. So, yeah. boom. If you, if you know any uh, children from history stories that are... I'd say they have to be a tier above, like, the class president rules being changed because I was an idiot. Mm-hmm. But okay. if you know anything like that, let, let us know. And nothing sad. I don't want to talk about children dying. Yeah, no, none of the sad stuff, ideally. Yeah. yeah, cool. Thanks for listening to Laughs from the Past. If this is your first time listening, this is season four, episode one. I think season one was 22 episodes. Season two was all about the Civil War, 10 episodes. And season three was historical mysteries and 15 episodes. So there is a lot of back catalog of laughs from the past. Go check us out. 
Leave a review, a rating, subscribe, and uh, we appreciate it. And uh, go Kid Blank. Are we Kid Blank fans or are we scared of them? Such Kid Blank. Like, I don't... These are words that are always scary for me to say because I know it's going to end up being an hour, hour and a half of your life. But, like, Kid Blank shirt, I could be talked into that. (laughs) All right. See you guys. Uh Bye.